I wanted to start off this right away with the main topic, obviously, which is the Trump attempted assassination. Where were you when you heard about this? What 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 did you think about it? Live. I was watching, you watching it live. live. Yeah. What did you think happened when like when you first saw it? Did you think just maybe it was potential gunfire and he just ducked or did you like what did you well, think? Well, it was a little confusing at first because watching it live it it didn't really sound like gunfire. Um it sounded, you know, pop pop pop. It it didn't sound like you would expect gunfire to sound like. I mean, I, I have a concealed permit, I have for 20 years, I've shot a lot of guns. And I guess when you're listening to it from 100 yards away, that's probably what it sounds like when you're shooting it up close, it certainly doesn't. So it took a minute for me to figure out what was going on. But, um, you know, I've I've shot a lot of guns over a lot uh, over 20 years, and including AR-15s. And um, I'll tell you that a 120 yard shot with a laser scope on an AR-15 is is like a two foot putt. He's really lucky that he's alive, but but more distressing is the fact that Secret Service would not have put someone on the roof with direct sight line 120 yards away. It's the one spot where someone must be. And you know, the, the, they, the they... slanted roof the uh, line yeah. that came out of the head of the <laughs> Secret Service is about as uh, pathetic as can be, which which really upsets me because it's just like we're supposed to believe that the the left just figured out that Biden is slipping mentally, that he's he's showing or exhibiting signs of senility. They just figured it out at the debate, including Jean Pierre, his press secretary. She had no idea. You know, it was it's crazy how this just happened. Well, it's just a bunch of crap. Just like we're not supposed to believe that they didn't understand that was the one spot where you would be completely uh, exposed from a point of, uh, you know, a high point. Um, it's it's really unbelievable if you ask me. Um, I, I find it to be as dis as distressing as anything I've seen. Now here's the here's the that thing. Now, no, can you see that? Yeah. All right. So, you know, that's the one spot you'd want to be protected, right? Yep. The one spot. And it, it's, they want us to, I mean, that they, they must think that everyone in this country is stupid to be able to say, oh, well, you know, we put, we put sharpshooters inside the building on ground level yeah. with 5,000 people there. Good luck. You're supposed to yeah. be from a, from an elevated point. Um, I think it's a sad state of affairs, dude. I think it's a sad state of affairs in in uh, in this country and uh, a very sad uh, day. In fact, I put it right up there with 9-11. Now, I don't mean to disparage where 3,000 people were killed, but what I'm saying is, you know, what has made this country what it is, is th are things like uh, a, a fair and equal judicial system, fair elections, uh, uh, legal and and um, and and orderly immigration. All of these things that made this country what it is are being turned upside down. Starting with the nuclear family, um, and things like saying the Pledge of Allegiance, and everything that was when we were kids is now gone. And and this is just a sad indictment, I think, to the system that is very much. Um, um, open to doing whatever it takes to achieve their goals right out in the open, right in front of everyone to see. And if you are, if you have the ability to critically think for yourself for a second, you would look at that and say, you know, if my kid were up there speaking and I were in charge of security, do you think I'd leave that one spot open where you could be perched up on an elevated position, a direct line of sight, 120 yards away, which for a, a trained shooter with an AR-15 and a and a laser scope or a red dot is literally, I mean, you could put this baseball on top of my head and shoot the damn thing and hit it more often than not uh, if you're a decent shot. And that's how easy it is to use a gun like that. Um, I don't know, I find They it knew he curious. was up there. The snipers were watching him. They uh, So first there is the officer that climbed on top of the building 
the sniper pointed at him, and then the officer let go, fell off the building. Why didn't they have an emergency line to immediately let everyone know so Trump could get off the stage? There, there were snipers. A guy actually said, I know the Secret Service guy who shot the shooter. He was told for three minutes to not shoot. He's from my town, and we worked together. So they knew. They were watching him. And then I was at the shooting range yesterday, um, and this guy's a military guy. We were talking for like hours, but he said um, that shooters aren't allowed, the, the Secret Service aren't allowed to shoot first. They have to wait for someone to shoot, which I don't know if that's true or not. That's what he said. The whole point, the whole thing is how, and I show, I sent you the video of those people for like two minutes saying, shooter on the roof, shooter, he's right there. Just a crowd of people. One guy said he, he alerted law enforcement twice. He went, walked up, alerted them, saw they didn't do anything so he walked back a second time to tell them like they all knew and saw the guy why didn't they at least just get like okay for okay whatever maybe they're not allowed to shoot first maybe whatever but why didn't they get him off the stage since they well, all supposedly knew? there were there were secret service in the building right underneath him so yeah, why did yeah. they not run up there with guns ablazing um like and you know, uh, it just, it, it reeks, it reeks of, of God, it reeks of, of them knowing it reeks of, um, desperation. And, you know, how many times have I said on your show in closing, if you think it will be smooth between now and the election, I got a bridge to sell you. I mean, it's not, it's not ending there. There is going to be more chaos. And the one thing that frightens me more than anything is, you know, their own admission. 20 million people are in here illegally. 1% of, of 20 million, 1% is 200,000 people. 5% is bigger than any standing military. That's a million people. Uh, one tenth of 1%, 20,000 people. I mean, is that next? God help us if so. But if they are willing to, in broad daylight, in open, plain sight, in such an ill-conceived manner, uh, and an ill, I mean, a ridiculously, grotesquely pathetic response, we didn't want to put snipers on a slanted roof. That's what the head of the Secret Service said. You know what the head of the Secret Service's job was before being the head of the Secret Service? She ran security detail for Jill Biden. Mm. So, you know, when you put this this um, incestuous uh, cesspool together, you can start to see, you know, and how did we get to the Secret Service? How did the Secret Services, the best and the brightest of this country, allow this shit to happen? I, I just don't get it. The, the lady's um, position is to try to push a 30% women rate now. Like, like the, it's not about being as efficient as possible. It's working on diversity. You know, I, I'm not trying to, uh, I hope I don't offend any, any women watching this, but you see that clip from when he's entering the, the, you know, the vehicle and the one lady can't put her holster in the gun. The other lady's fixing her sunglasses and the other one, it's only three lady, three women surrounding him entering in there. And they just, it looks like a clown show. And I'm not, you know, no disrespect. It's just, you know, that just is very concerning. Dude, I mean, there's many honest. clips. Can we be honest for a second? You're a minority. Yeah. You are a minority and you are talking about, about something that a lot of us want to talk about. That is merit based system thrown out the window based upon lifestyle and gender and whatnot. It's not how hard you work and you're a testament to success through hard work. No one gave you anything. And you, you are a testament to what can be achieved where 100,000 people listen to what you have to say, not because you're a minority and they're feeling, you know, diversion, equity, inclusion, you know, uh, right. That's a whatever. Good point. They're not, they're not doing that out of, out of pity. Uh, they're doing it because you work your ass off. And that's the way this country became successful through hard work and equal opportunity. And, and when you see that, um, it's just, it's, it, again, it's very grotesque. These are the things that have infiltrated our, you know, little by little by little, then all at once, then my logarithmic de decay statement that I always talk about, little by little, that is what has happened. And now it's just right in your face. And um, I don't find it to be insulting at all. In fact, I find it to be very uh, illuminating coming from you. You have the right to say that. You, you know... Um, and I, I say that with respect to you, you know, it goes to show it doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, 
or where you came from. It's how hard did you work and and what are you able to do with your efforts? And, um, you know, I, I remember having this discussion with my daughter when she was very young and, you know, why do some people have more than others? Everyone should have the same things. No, that's not how it works. Everyone should have the same opportunity. Yeah. And what you make of that opportunity is 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 what capitalism and free market enterprise is all about. Doesn't matter where you come from. Ben Carson is a good example of that. On last night on the on the um, at the at the convention, you know, this is a minority who, who came from nothing, and look what happened to him. And so. Look, and I'm the same thing. I'm a minority, and um, and I started from nothing. You know, I started from nothing in a one-room office the size of a closet 34 years ago. No one gave me anything. I worked my ass off to get to where I am, and so I think that the this this whole this whole tr ideology of of diversity and inclusion is just destroying, um, in many respects, the whole. What made this country special and that is giving everyone the same opportunity no matter where they came from or what they believe in um and, and that's the way it should be as far as i'm concerned you said a word earlier you said this incestuous cesspool like that really does explain so much of what's happening